Very good morning to you. It's Jim from Mathstar. Another program you might like if you're inquisitive like me. If you like Flight Radar 24, you're probably going to like this one as well. Um, it's a ship tracker and we might as well talk about it, mightn't we? <laughs> that ship that's been at anchor now for, I don't know, four or five days and its cargo is um, 22,000 pounds of fertilizer ammonium nitrate and it's currently 20 miles off of Margate and I would say at an estimate looking at that uh, uh, measuring bar at the bottom of the screen probably I don't know okay it's probably less than 100 miles from London <laughs> yeah, and that estuary there that you can see at the side of England is actually uh, the estuary that leads onto the River Thames. Now, can you imagine that if it was to just up anchor and start heading towards the estuary with that quantity of explosives on board? Well, it's actually fertilised, but it is very highly um, volatile. Uh, under the right circumstances and um, well we all seen the Beirut explosion didn't we and how violent that was and that was classed as one of the largest explosions uh, in in the last two decades known to mankind I don't know how true that is it's just what I've heard but that ship's capacity of ammonium nitrate would have the yield of twice the level of that explosion I'll quickly bring that up and then we'll go and have a look at um, flight radar 24 because there is at the moment a United States Air Force uh, Stratotanker uh, currently hovering around Mosul in Iraq and uh, the RAF the British Air Force have just put their um, aerial refueling tanker back up so um, at the moment there's no typhoons escorting it but you know it shows that there's a lot of activity going on in that region uh, of the Middle East but isn't it strange that this ship as I, I don't know if it's broken down or just waiting for permission to go through uh, the channel or what but it's at, currently at anchor as you can see there uh, its speed is hardly anything 0 0.3 knots and it's currently got a draft of 10 meters if you're interested in any of that information um, it's sailing under the flag of Malta and I think it's uh, place of origin or place of built was Russia but it's not I don't believe a Russian ship or owned by Russians I don't I, I'm not 100% sure on that all is I know is that when you click on you know uh, for more information it does show you that it is sailing uh, under the flag of Malta and I think that that is its destination actually uh, but yeah there's been a lot of cont uh, controversy about this particular vessel because of what it's carrying and the fact that it is parked right on the estuary of London <laughs> you could just imagine if that ship I, I don't think the Navy or the Air Force would ever let that ship get anywhere near that estuary because you could just imagine the level of damage it could do <laughs> uh, with that explosive capacity let me just show you what happened in Beirut when half of that amount of explosives uh, well not explosive half the amount of that um, ammonium nitrate exploded so this video was added to uh, YouTube uh, by the Telegraph and this is the explosion and that is half the yield which is on the ruby at the moment 20 miles off the coast of Margate but it was an incredible explosion and did an incredible amount of damage and uh, you can see why a few people might be concerned about this being parked you know just 20 miles off the off off um, you know Margate and less than a hundred miles from you know the uh, capital of England London absolutely incredible amount of damage but 
but it's not just the damage it could do to um, you know uh, cities and towns if it was to get close to the in the UK. You know something that people don't think of, um, which is constantly going up and down the um, the British Channel because it is one of the world's most busiest shipping lanes. Um, there are frequently submarines that are travelling. I just wonder what damage that could do in a nearby vicinity of a submarine especially if that submarine was nuclear submarine and it was carrying nuclear warheads oh, I don't know whether it had set the warheads off but I'm just thinking about the um, the uh, you know the damage it could do to the ocean environment and ocean life in that region and for what period of time it could do that damage you know to the marine biology so well, let's go back over to um, Flight Radar 24. So just a couple of things of interest uh, that I've been looking at is that Stratus tanker. Um, it did fly up almost to the region of Mosul in Iraq. And um, it's there for a purpose. We all know that. It's obviously refueling you know, small perhaps fighter jets, you know, that are, you know, probably patrolling up and down, you know, that course line that the, you can see also, um, which is around about 100 miles off the border of Iran. It's well within, uh, it's well uh, out of the Iranian or Iran's airspace, and there's nothing wrong with the United States, you know, flying strata tankers and fighter jets in that region but uh, another thing of interest are these uh, TB2s uh, Bioreactor drones that's the first one and there's another one just north of that if I can just get it to uh, highlight it's right over by the airport I can't get it to highlight. Ah, there we go. And that's the other one. But you do see a lot of bioreactors in Turkey. That's where they're manufactured. And you see them um, more often on the, just uh, off the Syrian border. Whether that is for any particular reason, I don't know. It could just be, you know, they're testing round or their, you know, natural flight route. <clears throat> But, uh, you know, uh, they do have a reputation for being one of Ukraine's favourite uh, drones. You know, they love the TB2s or the Bioreactor. And that's it at the moment. Not a lot else going on. Um, There was a tanker earlier that took off, an RAF one, from the Air Force Base in uh, Cyprus, but uh, I, it's landed now. And uh, yesterday we had a couple of, um, you know, uh, tornadoes, Eurofighters accompanying it. It went right up here to the border of Turkey and then came back. And I think it was just patrolling the Lebanon border. But this, you know, guys, is costing the taxpayers money. So not only have these um, air refuelers and fighter jets, you know, patrolling this region now, I think America have got two aircraft carriers in this region. And a, a third one, I think, might be on the way there. You know, there is a colossal cost to all this. You know, somebody's got to pay for it. It's usually the taxpayer. yeah um you can see there's a little bit less traffic now going over iraq commercial and passenger traffic whether that is you know because they might be you know clearing the airspace just in case it is suspected that there will be another missile strike like we saw come from iran where 300 missiles was fired at israel is another uh, another story 
yet to play out, if, even if it does. But look what is going on in the Middle East at the moment. You know, Israel firing missiles at Lebanon. You know, you know they've virtually destroyed Gaza. They have fired missiles within the last couple of months at Iran. And I believe at Syria. And also um, at the Houthis. You know, it's... Um, it's really is all kicking off in that region and then if we go further north well you don't get much traffic flying over uh, the Ukraine so we're over the Black Sea now mould over to the, the left centre there and then you can see absolutely well there probably is aircraft flying over Ukraine but it certainly won't put its transponder on and you can see nothing flying over Belarus really but all round the outskirts and because you know these are active war zones at the moment and that's why I say if we see you know the airspace clearing up over Iraq it's because they're clearing the airspace of you know civilian aircraft because you know there'd be missiles traveling backwards and forwards unbelievable times you know it's not just what is taking place with our climate what is taking place economically with our world it's also what's taking place in, uh, you know, wars. You know, as if we haven't got enough to add to our problems at the moment. You know, you would think that there'd be more um, diplomacy to avoid conflicts. But it seems like they want to, you know, at the moment, I've got to say this, it does seem like Israel, you know, are instigating in spreading the war to other countries you know first Gaza then you know uh, down here uh, not Saudi Arabia where is it Yemen you know I mean the Yemenis are firing missiles at Israel you know the, the British and the Americans have got battleships going up the Red Sea trying to protect shipping and uh, you know there's an aircraft carrier I believe in the Persian Gulf at the moment belonging to the United States I don't think the British will be able to get an aircraft carrier anywhere near that region because they're always breaking down and as soon as they start them Caterpillar engines up on them uh, aircraft carriers you know China are aware of it straight away because it picks up on their sonar as soon as they start them up I'm just joking by the way <laughs> but they're a bit of a waste of time because I believe they've only got four F-35s on each of them so just like um, you know other countries have problems with their aircraft carriers because they're not they're not they they take a long time from what I've researched on aircraft carriers they take a long time to make them reliable so when they enter service, they're still like, you know, um, running them in, basically. But they've had a, quite a lot of problems with the British aircraft carriers, the Elizabeth class and the Prince of Wales. A lot of problems. Uh, but then again, you know, when you look at what we've got for a small island that we are, England's got two aircraft carriers. Russia doesn't even have one that's usable at the moment so I suppose in that respect at least we have got we can say we've got two even if they aren't they're not nuclear you know they're uh, diesel or heavy oil or whatever they call it but uh, I think that was a waste of time we should have just paid the Americans to build our aircraft carriers at least we would have had um, you know nuclear aircraft carriers and and I think you know the the benefit of having a nuclear aircraft carrier as opposed to a diesel one is that as soon as you part that aircraft carrier off the coast of some country that you're going to have a conflict with if they sink it they pollute their coastline for the next 200,000 years so it's, it's a deterrent to have a nuclear uh, aircraft carrier as to having just a diesel one and then the other benefit of having a nuclear aircraft carrier 
is the extended distance that nuclear power gives you as opposed to you know uh, diesel so that's just my view in here so I thought we'd bring you something different because at the moment we can't just keep for you guys you know just doing the magnetic pole position every other day because it would just be mundane you know and the distance would be small at least if we do it twice a month and we do start seeing you know an increase in distance over time you know we can bring it perhaps to three times a month or four times a month depending on how fast it's migrating but um you know i just thought i'd show you something else as well that you might be interested in so there you go guys if you want to help us out do with doing what we do here at the observatory keeping the magnetic port poles um tracked for you you know link down there in the description and i'll say what i usually do you take care as always bye for now